We know that there are three interior angles in a triangle, so interior means inside angles. We also know that the three angles in any triangle will add up to 180 degrees. Could you prove that? In order to complete a proof, we have to bring in some other piece of information. So we can't just say that these three angles are going to add to 180, that's a statement. So if we look at the way we've got this diagram set up, we can see that we have another line drawn here. And if this line happens to be parallel to the base of the triangle, then there's all sorts of angle relationships that can come into play. So let's begin by saying, okay, let's draw a line passing through vertex D at the top here that is going to be parallel to this this line on the base of the triangle. And then you always kind of want to have an idea as to where we're going with this. So we ultimately need to show that this plus this plus this is equal to 180 degrees. But if we take a look at this, we can also see that we have three other angles here forming a straight angle, which will also be 180 degrees. I labeled each of these angles using a Greek letter. I also color coordinated them so it's easier to see what's happening. So we can see that PDR is this angle in green here, RDE is this angle in red here, and then QDE is this angle in blue here. Together these three angles form our 180 degree angle. Now ultimately, go back to what we're trying to prove, we need to show that the interior angles add up to 180, and of these three angles, only this one in red happens to be inside the triangle. But Remember, we created this second line here parallel to the base of our triangle. So we know that if we take a look here, this is the Z pattern. These are alternate interior angles, which happen to be equal when lines are parallel. And then over here, we also have another set of alternate interior angles. So we know that this angle is equal to this one. These two happen to be in the triangle. PDR is this angle here, and it's equal to D to R to E. So that's this angle here. Just watch as you're labeling those. And again, make sure you put their alternate interior angles are equal, but it's only because these lines are parallel. That piece is really important. If the lines aren't parallel, that's not a true statement. And then similar, the same thing is going to happen on this side. Okay, so now we've got this angle here is on the board. This angle here is on the board, as is this one. So the three angles within the triangle, our interior angles are all on there. Can we now show that they're going to add up to 180 degrees? Ultimately, these three interior angles are these three angles here. So if we go back to our original statement that we used to show this is also a 180 degree straight angle, we can see that we can substitute this angle with what it's equal to. That's here, that's one of the angles in our triangle here. This is the angle that's in the straight angle as well as the inside of the triangle. And we can substitute this angle here with what it is equal to, which is the third angle inside of our triangle. So now by substitution, we've shown that these three angles within the triangle are going to add to 180 degrees. That's one property of triangles that we know to be true. The three inside angles will always add up to 180 degrees. An exterior angle in a triangle is one on the outside. So if you were to draw a triangle and then extend any one of these side lengths, that angle formed between the side length and the other side of the triangle, that's the exterior angle. So again, extend one of those side lengths and the angle between that side length and the side of the triangle, that's your exterior angle. So on this particular corner or vertex, we can see that we extended this way. But if I were to also extend this way, as I did over here, we can see this this would be my exterior angle. So it's the one between that extended side length and the other side of the triangle. So if this is my exterior angle, that angle on the outside, these two angles are my non-adjacent interior angles. So non-adjacent means not beside. So this would be the adjacent angle to this exterior angle. So these are the two that are not adjacent and interior means they're inside the triangle. Now what do you notice about this angle and these two angles? And I'm going to give you a hint. This is going to lead into the second proof we're going to do. Let's say, not drawn to scale, that this is a 100 degree angle. 
This would then be 80 degrees because these two angles form a straight angle. They are supplementary angles. We also know that the interior angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So this plus this plus this is 180. If we remove this 80 degree angle, we have 100 degrees left. So these two angles have to add up to 100 degrees. These two non-adjacent interior angles will add up to the same measure as that exterior angle. And that brings us to our next proof. Can we prove that an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum when we add together the measures of the other two non-adjacent interior angles? And again, there's multiple ways we can go about this. If we take this diagram, we can see we have an exterior angle here, D. We also have an exterior angle, E. So we're going to use angle E here. So if this is my exterior angle, this C is my adjacent angle. We're going to take the two non-adjacent angles, A and B, so we know that A plus B should add up to E. Can we prove it? If we're trying to show E is equal to A plus B, I need to bring another angle into this mix. So I've got E, I've got A, and I've got B. So let's maybe take angle, and again, there's multiple ways we could do this, but there are no parallel lines in this particular diagram. So those angle relationships we don't have to work with. Let's maybe take angle C because it is the interior angle in the triangle. And then we're going to say, okay, how does C relate to E? We know these two angles are supplementary. We also know A plus B plus C, those are the interior angles that have to add to 180. So let's see what we can do here. Once we have those two statements listed, always go back to what we're trying to show. So we've got A plus B, so we've got A plus B here is equal to E. We don't want this C and we don't want this 180 in our proof. Is there a way that we can replace this piece and have it equal E? So take a look at what we have here and we can see that E is equal to, and there's that C and there's that 180. So let's rearrange this algebraically to isolate E. So if C happens to be equal to 180 degrees minus angle E, then I've gone ahead and replaced what C is equal to into that first equation in the place of C. Now if I subtract 180 degrees from this side and subtract 180 degrees from this side, they're going to end up zeroing out. So we're going to be left with this A plus B minus E equals zero, can we now rearrange it to get it into that format? And you can see that by adding E to each side, we end up with a statement that is what we're trying to prove. So again, one way of going about this, but there are multiple ways of doing this. Most of the time when I do a proof, it never ends up quite the way it did before. Always go back to what are we trying to show, bring in that third piece of information at least, and then can you manipulate those pieces using algebraic rearrangement, the transitive property, etc., to bring those together to get to what we ultimately want to defend. Using what we know about triangular properties, we're now going to determine missing angle measures in geometric shapes involving triangles. So we're going to begin by finding the unknown interior angles in triangle MAT. So I've got one interior angle already listed. I need to find the other two angles inside that triangle, as well as to provide reasons as to how we know those are the measures. Let's say we need to do a two column proof. It's an easy way for me to provide reasons as to how how we know things are true. All right, so take a look here. Do we have enough information to begin by solving for angle A? And because there's not much around it, I would say probably not. However, angle T, we know that this forms a supplementary angle or a straight angle with about 155 degrees. So I can get the measure of angle T first. And then once I've got the measure of this angle, there's only one angle that remains. And you're going to notice I called this angle ATM. I did not just refer to this angle as T because T technically could be that one or that one. So I was really clear M to T to A. That angle is 25 degrees. And then we also know that these three angles added together have to equal 180. So I can solve for that angle and then just quickly check to make sure that those three do in fact add up to 180 degrees. And then you can also do another quick check is this exterior angle equal to the measure of these two non-adjacent interior angles. In our next diagram, we can see that we have parallel lines, so we know there's all kinds of angle relationships that come into play, and we have to determine these three angles. Then now the first thing we need to do is identify where are those angles. So if I'm going from N 
to M to O, that's going to be this angle in here. So maybe let's kind of identify. So let's call that angle theta. So that's going to be this one that we're looking for. And then angle M to N to O, so that's going to be this angle in here. So I'm going to choose a different color. So maybe let's call this angle alpha. So that's that one that we're going to be looking for. And then our final one, QMO, we're going from Q to M to O, so that's that angle there that we're going to be looking for. And let's maybe call that one beta. We can see that there is a triangle in this diagram, but we only know one of the interior angles. We have parallel lines. We can see that we have alternate interior angles. So this 67 degrees means this angle here has to be 67 degrees. That will allow me to solve for that piece. So I've got the measure here. 47 degrees has to be this angle right there. And then I now have two of those angles within the triangle. So I can subtract those two from 180 to solve for that other angle, theta. And now that we know that angle, I can see that I have these angles here are going to form a straight angle. They're not called supplementary because there's three. And remember, by definition, supplementary is two, but they are going to add to 180 degrees. So I can take 180, subtract those two angles, and I can solve for that third angle. If you can't easily identify where some of those relationships are, try rotating your paper. Sometimes if you turn it upside down or sideways, you can see things in a way that you couldn't previously. Another trick is when you think you've got the measures, check them multiple ways. So look at those angle relationships we know, and can we see if they all check out? And in our final one, we have an isosceles triangle because these tick marks indicate that those two side lengths are the same measure, which also means that these two angles, the base angles, have to be the same measure. So whichever symbol I use to represent one, the other has to be equal. That only occurs in an isosceles triangle. So we can begin with the sum of the measures, 180 degrees, remove that one angle we know, 46 degrees, and that leaves us with 134 degrees that is split evenly amongst those two angles. So divide that in half, each angle is going to equal 67 degrees.